Here we go. Guys, have you ever wondered just how inaccurate the Holy Roman Empire is in Europa Universalis 4? Well, today's your lucky day. I've been holding off doing this region for a long time now, just given its complexity. But after doing a Rocky 2.0, I thought I'd delve in to the Border Gorish HRE. After investigating this region, it was an absolute nightmare. So I think I need to give you guys a warning and make sure you don't go into shock at just how inaccurate the HRE is. Now, the HRE had been updated a few years ago with the Emperor update, so I thought it couldn't be that bad. But guys, I was completely wrong. It's horrendous, it's a nightmare, and is perhaps the most inaccurate place within Europa Universalis 4. Now, let's get one thing straight here. I can't blame Paradox for not making this place historically accurate, and it is perhaps the most challenging and tough places to make historically accurate, and Paradox needed to prioritise gameplay over historical accuracy, especially when you consider this region. If you want to play a more accurate HRE, you can always just hop on Voltaire's Nightmare, but your computer might have an absolute breakdown like mine did, and I don't want to see your computer melt due to the provinces added into the game. However, having said all this, without Paradox being too historically accurate, there are still a few things you can add in to make the gameplay better and make it more historically accurate, which I want to discuss in this video. Given the absolute scale of the HRE, I'm also only going to focus on the most played countries, which I'm sure you're most interested in. And to be honest with you, besides me going, oh, that border's inaccurate. And oh, and, and that border's inaccurate. Oh, and, and that one's inaccurate as well, which isn't very interesting. I want to give you an interesting video that has a lot of detail overall, and so you learn a bit about the region at this time. Now, I need to make sure Ulm is historically accurate in EU4. So I'm going to save you the trouble and fly to all myself if we get to 100,000 subscribers. So if you want to see that happen, make sure to subscribe. Also, make sure to like the video if you want a part two, as this gives me an indication of how much interest there is in this region. We are first going to talk about the historical inaccuracy of the most played nation, the HRE, which is, of course, Austria. I personally am partly Austrian, so this nation really piqued my interest. Since Austria is the head of the Holy Roman Empire at the start of the game, you can imagine they are just really powerful and have these really major buffs. Austria also has one of the most powerful dynasties on the throne, the Habsburgs, which I'm sure some of you know and would love to go on a date with one of the members. Am I right? However, what you see in game is entirely inaccurate to the reality of Austria during this time. It wasn't a unified country as shown on the map, and unlike the genes of the Habsburgs, it was incredibly diversified. This is due to a Habsburg dynasty member known as Rudolf. When he died in 1365, just 80 years before the start date of EU4, his two brothers took control of Austria, and they decide to jointly rule together. But after a while, they didn't get on, and so they decided to split the land between each other. And this was probably bound to happen. I mean, do you really get on with your siblings? Between 1365 and 1444, which is the start date of EU4, the inheritance of the Austrian land was rather confusing. As time went on, it even split up further, but we'll discuss what it should look like at the start date of EU4. And to be honest with you, it's much more messy than you see in game, and entirely inaccurate. Now, take a deep breath, let's explain it. At the start of the game, Austria should be split up into four nations. We firstly have Austria in the north of the country, which is controlled by Ladislaus. As far as I'm aware, I don't think I actually see him at the start of the game, but I think he comes in a bit later. Slightly below Austria, we have Styria, which is controlled by Frederick III, and he is Holy Roman Emperor, and the E4 Austrian starting leader. Then we have Tyrol, which is controlled by Sigismund the Rich in Coin, and that is in the western part of Austria. Finally, we have Albert VI, who should control Inner Austria, and he was the brother of Frederick III. In terms of how these nations should interact with one another, Inner Austria and Austria should be vassals of Styria, and Tyrol should have an alliance with Styria. Now as much as this is really interesting, I can kind of understand why Paradox wouldn't want to add this in game, and of course there might be some sort of balancing issues. It's also quite confusing, and you can understand why Paradox didn't want Austria to be represented in this way. Just delving into a bit of Austrian history after the start date of EU4, we also have this interesting power struggle between Frederick III and Ulrich of Scilly over the control of Ladislaus and Austria. So maybe somehow this could be added into EE4 to make the game more interesting, as well as more historically accurate. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Should anything I say here be added into the game? 
The next major HRE nation I want to talk about is Bohemia, which of course is very relevant in EE4. Historically, Bohemia was in chaos at the start of the game, and I personally have to say, Paradox have represented this chaos really well in Bohemia. A few years before the start date of EE4, the Bohemian king Albert died, and the Czech nobility did not accept Albert's son as their new king, which is why we have this weird situation in game where Bohemia has no king. Now interestingly, Bohemia was an elective monarchy during this time, so being the son of the previous king did not give you the automatic right to become king of Bohemia, and the kings had to make deals with the Czech nobility in order for their sons to become king upon his death. So maybe it's something Paradox could add in, rather than having the government type it has now, which is not historically accurate. Or they could even make a new government type and have some sort of Bohemian elective monarchy, which I'm sure people would love. In terms of map accuracy, Bohemia has far more vassals than what is represented in game. And this other map gives you a good representation of just how many vassals Bohemia had. This map also shows Moravia being a subject of Bohemia and being a different entity to Bohemia. And this is actually very historically accurate, and Moravia should be a vassal of Bohemia in game. Moravia even had a different title for its leader, and this is called the Margrave of Moravia. And it was actually given to Ladislaus in 1440, and he only became king of Bohemia in 1453. So you can clearly see there's two different entities here, and therefore they should be represented differently in game. But then again, it's quite politically complicated, and I'm not sure how they do it exactly. The title Margrave of Moravia was eventually united with the title King of Bohemia in 1611. I just think it's important to note Moravia had its own different interests, and you could probably add it in game somehow. But given the political situation, I understand how it might be difficult to implement. But what do you guys think though? Should this Austrian king be given Austria as well as Moravia? Or is it just too confusing and complicated? Let me know in the comments as I always love to hear what you guys have to say. Next I want to talk about Brandenburg and Saxony together. Now I firstly want to say, to make the borders historically accurate in game is a really impossible task. And we can see it just from this map here. But there still are a few things I would suggest Paradox does in order for the game to be more fun and historically accurate. In EE4, Rupin is a releasable nation for Brandenburg, but actually, historically, if you look into it, Rupin is a HRE prince of a time and is independent from Brandenburg. Therefore, Rupin should be an EE4 starting nation and not a releasable tag for Brandenburg. To be honest with you, after this, I'm not sure how much Paradox could do. Looking into Saxony, there are at least five HRO princes within its borders, such as Vokland and Dresden. Can you imagine six OPMs in the middle of Saxony? It's just not viable and possible. Doing a bit of research into these OPMs, there also wasn't that much about them, and you're better off not adding them in, because they're just so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. If you do, however, want to play as these OPMs, then Voltaire's Nightmare is always an option. So sadly though, besides releasing Ruping as its own starting nation, there's nothing else I would suggest Paradox do, and it's simply too difficult to add anything else in. But I'm all ears if you guys have some suggestions in the comments. So those four HRE nations I've discussed are probably the most played and most interesting for people who play EU4. And I'm sure most of you are interested in that, rather than just some random one province miners that have no historical flavour in the grand scheme of things. Just showing a comparison of HRE and EU4, and a more accurate representation of HRE and this map, there's simply no point me saying that border's wrong, and that border's inaccurate. And you can clearly see for yourself, it just wouldn't be interesting to add some of these one province miners that were historically there. And I actually have to commend Paradox for doing a good job here. I now just want to give you an overall scale of the difference between the HRE in EU4 and the historical HRE. When looking at the HRE elections, the seven electors of HRE with the three archbishops and the four secular electors is historically accurate, and Paradox have definitely got this right. But everything else in the HRE is a little different. Historically, there are over a hundred free imperial cities, and in EE4 there are only eight. Historically, you can have between 200 and 300 states in the Holy Roman Empire, and in EE4 there are only 71. The truth is, there's no way Paradox could add all this in without having some major balancing issues. 
I also think there's no point in you going through 200 states that Power Dots haven't added in. It just wouldn't be an interesting video, and I'm sure most of you would click off and get bored. The states Power Dots haven't also added in are also really historically insignificant. And to be honest with you, having nations in E4 without any historical flavour is really boring in game. Having said all this, I hope this gives you some perspective of the HRE, and how adding all this in would have major problems in game. So in conclusion, although historically this is probably one of the most inaccurate regions in EU4, it makes perfect sense. And to be honest with you, believe it or not, I'm quite happy they've done this. And I actually don't want to play a really historically accurate HRE, and I think it'll just be too complicated for the average person. All in all, besides some of the suggestions I've made, I don't think there's much Power Dots could do with the HRE. But I'm really interested into hearing what you guys have to say. So please do leave me a comment on what you think and whether they should add anything I've suggested in the video. If you're watching near the upload time, I'll be streaming on Twitch, so if you have any questions about HRE, you can ask me over there. And I'd like to shout out our Patreons, Jodo52, Henrique, Flyerton, and Carbon. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you next time.